Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon if you want to support the channel, follow me on Twitch to watch me stream, and like and subscribe to catch that pesky gato next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building death from Puss in Boots, and I don't mean metaphorically or rhetorically or poetically or theoretically or in any other fancy way, just death, straight up. God, he is such a way with words. Oh no. Mm. This better not awaken anything in me. <laughs> Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to bring the terror. I play D&D to see accurate depictions of panic attacks and healthy ways to stop them. Next, we need to hide in the shadows, emerging seemingly out of nowhere. Finally, we need borderline supernatural tracking abilities. Everybody thinks they can escape, but everybody is wrong. Hi, I wanted to thank today's sponsor, Factor, for sponsoring this video. Factor is a meal delivery service that delivers you fresh, never frozen meals to your house. After I get done working out, the last thing I want to do is fuss over in the kitchen or order takeout. Factor's meals are ready to eat in two minutes. You just pop them in the microwave and you're ready to eat them and the flavor is still there. Whatever your dietary wants or needs, Factor has something for you. I like the calorie smart option. With flavors like sun-dried tomato and chicken fusilli with Italian herb roasted zucchini. Chorizo chili mac with cauliflower and poblano peppers. Or roasted garlic chicken with green beans and sour cream and onion mashed potatoes. Tell me that doesn't sound delicious. I want you to be able to try Factor 2, and Factor is hooking up 2Lock subscribers with a fantastic deal. Check out the link in the description and enter offer code 2Lock40 at checkout for 40% off your first Factor box. Hey, summer's coming up, and I'm sure you don't want to spend time cooking. Spend time eating and doing whatever else you want. Link in the description, 2Lock40 at checkout, 40% off your first Factor box. Now back to the video. For stats, we'll be using the standard point buy from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. Charisma is 15. A lot of people learned a lot about themselves watching the movie, and yeah, and you're intimidating. Strength after 14, you use sickles. Those aren't finesse weapons. That's weird. And when you turn them into a double-ended weapon, I'd call that a glaive. You're basically a bloodborne hunter. Dexterity and wisdom at 12, not as high as I'd like, but we'll actually have a way to patch those up. Constitution's a bit low. I don't think you're a pushover, but you do kind of just never get hit. Don't need help if you don't plan on getting hit. And we'll dump intelligence. Again, I don't think death is a dummy, I just don't think we need it for anything. While you're an intangible force representing the end of natural life, there isn't a lineage for that in Dungeons & Dragons, so I'm going for Wild Hunt Shifter. Bump your strength by 2 and your charisma by 1 for 16 in both stats. Enjoy that dark vision. You can shift for 1d10 plus 0 constitution and temporary HP for a minute. As a Wild Hunt Shifter, while shifting, you also get advantage on wisdom checks, and no creature within 30 feet of you can make attacks against you with advantage. It's great if you want to hunt, I don't know, a rogue. You also get perception for free as a shifter and survival for free because you're a wild hunt shifter, making you a better tracker. We can grab athletics and intimidation from your background. With those big strong hands, everyone's gonna run away from you. Oh no, did I oh did I trip? Oh shoot, oh darn, he's gonna get me. Oh no. We'll kick things off as a bard. Yeah, just rip that band-aid off, bard haters. You get three skills of your choice, like acrobatics, stealth, and sleight of hand. Not for pickpocketing, just to flourish those sickles with style. You'll get some spells like vicious mockery, forcing a wisdom saving throw on a creature dealing a d4 of psychic damage if they fail and giving them disadvantage on their next attack roll. Generally, I think people make this a derogatory or snide remark, but honestly, it could be a lot more vicious than mockery. Prestidigitation lets you do a bunch of small magical stuff used to add a little extra flourish. For your first level spells, Bane just makes people worse at fighting, forcing a charisma saving throw on up to three creatures. Failing that, they have a d4 penalty to their attack rolls and saving throws. It'll make them more susceptible to vicious mockery, or maybe dissonant whispers. That's a bigger, badder vicious mockery. Forces of wisdom saving throw on a creature. Failing that, they take 3d6 psychic damage and have to use their reaction to move their movement speed away from you. To catch up with them after you pummel them with some trauma damage, Long Strider adds 10 feet to your movement speed. Silvery Barbs gives a creature disadvantage on an ability check, attack roll, or saving throw, and another creature advantage on an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw. Basically, we're making everyone who fights us worse while making ourselves better. Bardic Inspiration will contribute to that as well later, but for now, it's a pool of d6 is equal to your charisma modifier. You can give it to another creature that do an ability check, attack roll, or save saving throw. Second level bards get jack of all trades, letting you add half your proficiency bonus to skill checks you're not proficient with, so even those intelligence checks won't be all that bad. Song of Rest gives friendly creatures an extra d6 of healing on short rests, but I'm guessing the creatures you'll be helping sleep are going to take long rests. Very, very long rests. Third level bards get expertise in two skills. We're going to go for intimidation and survival for better tracking and startling. More importantly though, we can choose a bardic college. College of Whispers lets us turn that terror up. Psychic Blades lets you add 2d6 psychic damage to an attack roll, 
by spending a bardic inspiration die. Save it for a crit, and that's 46. Sure, sickles are terrible weapons, but if you can add 46 extra damage of a type that isn't commonly resisted, that's pretty good. Words of Terror lets you force a wisdom saving throw on a creature you've been chatting with at the bar for at least a minute. After that, they're frightened of you or another creature for an hour, or until they are attacked. Which, yeah, that's not actually all that good if you want to hunt people. But if they pass the wisdom saving throw, they don't know you actually tried to scare them, so there's no real risk to it. They might feel slightly different emotions towards you, though. For this level spell, Locate Plants and Animals lets you find a plant or an animal of a general variety or specific variety. I'd count Puss as a humanoid, but maybe your DM is a total jerk. Fourth level bards get an ability score improvement. Start with your charisma for maximum terror damage. We have a little already, but we'll get even more soon. Fifth level bards get a font of inspiration, making your inspiration die recover on short rests instead of long rests, and your psychic blades deal 3d6 extra damage instead of 2d6. You can also learn third level spells like Fear, forcing a wisdom saving throw on creatures in a 60 foot cone in front of you. Failing that, they're frightened of you and have to use their action to dash away. It's the biggest, spookiest, scariest spell. Now we're going to get better at fighting by jumping over to Paladin, giving you proficiency with all martial weapons. If you want to go from two sickles to the far superior glaive trick weapon, now you can do that. You also get divine sense to detect celestials, fiends, and undead an amount of times per day equal to your charisma modifier. Undead creatures need to be corrected. Nine lives is excessive. Lay on hands lets you heal a creature you touch from a pool equal to five times your Paladin level as an action. You could touch other people to heal them, or you could touch yourself. You can Google that on your work computer for more information. There's a lot of very helpful fan art to help you figure out the rules of that. Second level paladins can get a fighting style. Unfortunately, two weapon fighting isn't on here, but great weapon fighting is, so your glaive trick weapon can reroll ones and twos on damage die to attacks you make with that weapon. That works with your psychic blades as well, and smites. Smites lets you spend spell slots to add 2d8 radiant damage to an attack with an extra d8 against undead or fiends, and another d8 per spell level. Really didn't think of puss as an undead, but yeah, he qualifies. You could also stack that with the spell Wrathful Smite, which adds a d6 to your next weapon attack's damage and forces a wisdom saving throw on a creature you hit, frightening them if they fail. So many ways to cause fear. How about another one? Not the spell cause fear. Third level paladins can choose an oath, and the oath of conquest is all about fear. With its channel of divinity, conquering presence. It forces a wisdom saving throw on creatures in a 30 foot radius, failing that they are frightened of you for up to a minute or until they pass the saving throw on their turn. Or you could go for guided strike to add 10 to an attack roll to make sure you hit. The fear is going to be better, and even better, better later. Fourth level paladins get another ability score improvement cap off your charisma for maximum terror effects. Fifth level paladins get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks instead of one with your action, each of which can have a smite, but only one can have a psychic blade attached. Don't know why, seems weird. Sixth level paladins get an aura of protection, letting you add your charisma modifier to saving throws and the saving throws of allies within five feet. That's for Puss in Boots 3, where you team up and beat, I don't know, donkey skin or something. I don't know which fairy tale creatures haven't been tackled in the shrek averse More importantly though, this means you don't have negative saving throws anymore. You don't have negative saving throws, you don't have negative ability checks, you don't have negative attack rolls. You are good at everything. Seventh level conquest paladins get Aura of Conquest, setting a creature's movement speed to zero when they're frightened of you and within 10 feet of you. Then they take psychic damage equal to half your paladin level. Every turn, they end their turn within the aura. That's a reason to get that fear effect on. Eighth level paladins get another ability score improvement. Now we're going to start working on strength to hit harder with all of your weapons. Ninth level paladins can learn third level paladin spells. Spirit Shroud might be pretty great, adding a d8 of radiant, necrotic, or cold damage to weapon attacks against all creatures within 10 feet of you. It slows creatures' movement speed by 10 feet and prevents them from healing. That's going to stop everyone from escaping death. 10th level paladins make sure you never have to feel the pain of the fear effects with the aura of courage, making you and your allies immune to frightening within 10 feet of you. Back over to bards, 6th level whisper bards get mantle of whispers, letting you take the identity of a creature that dies near you. Not really a thing death does, I just want more levels for more psychic damage on the psychic blades and more specific spells. Like at the 7th level of bard, where you can learn 4th level spells like locate creatures to magically find a specific creature within a thousand feet of you, and if they're moving, you know what direction they're moving in. It makes you a real bloodhound. Eighth level bards get another ability score improvement, cap off your strength for maximum ouchies, you gotta make the death. Ninth level bards can learn 5th level spells. Scrying lets you find creatures and spy on them. If you have a piece of their body, like fur or claws, you're able to find them better. Or if you have a likeness of them, maybe a wanted poster. It's the best way to find people. Just create your own little surveillance state. Our capstone is the 10th level of bard, and there is a whole bunch of stuff here that really makes death deathy. First, 5d6 psychic blades damage. And better inspiration, but you're probably using it for, you know, the horrifying murder. Expertise in two more skills, I think stealth and perception, so you can sneak up on other people and they can't sneak up on you. 
new and magical secrets so you can compel someone to duel with the best spell to do that wall of fire compel duel forces a wisdom saving throw that's weak stuff wall of fire creates a giant wall of fire forcing a dexterity saving throw on creatures and dealing 5d8 fire damage to those that fail have as much to those that succeed you can also deal that damage to creatures within 10 feet of one side of the wall for your other spell jump triple edge up distance i just needed the wall of fire now that we've hit level 20 let's figure out how viable this build is first you bring that fear with a plus 17 intimidation check and so many fear effects and five passive damage every turn to creatures who are afraid of you you can also lock people down with aura of conquest and wall of fire to stop people from getting away or literally lock people into the fire finally you're amazing at finding people with a plus 17 to survival and perception checks and locate creature as a virtual cheat code to find people who would hide from you for weaknesses i guess you don't have that much hp only around 110 which isn't great if you want to be a melee fighter your ac is also pretty mediocre with 16 at best in medium armor since you started as a bard and don't have proficiency with the heavy stuff like we would have if we started with paladin finally sickles are pretty terrible you can always use the superior glaive though trick weapons are better in one form from soft please make a puss in boots game overall this is a really solid build bardadin is great and combining the fear effects of a whispers bard and a conquest paladin just really puts that panic in just make sure your pursuit of your prey doesn't lead them to bomb with new and old friends to find a new appreciation for life and be the worst kill him before they can make any friends thanks for watching if you like the video subscribe for more we're making videos and stuff all the time join the patreon to support the channel and check out two lock and mango for more two lock fun